Hey guys, what's happening? And thanks for tuning in. Uh, this video is going to be another in the series that I'm doing where I watch and review some of the most shocking and disturbing uh, films in all of horror. Uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about 1988's Men Behind the Sun. And like I've done with the previous videos in this series, I'm going to talk about the film a little bit and then I'm going to have a section where I spoil the actual content. Uh, for anyone who just wants to know what's in the film. And like I've done with the other videos, I'll put down in the description below the timestamps of where I'm going to start and end that segment so you know exactly where to pause and then pick back up for my final thoughts on the film. So let's get started. Yeah, 1988's Men Behind the Sun. Uh, this is one that gets thrown out uh, pretty much every time uh, I looked anywhere for, uh, you know, shocking and disturbing films to watch. Uh, it's never really at the top of anybody's list, but somebody always puts it out there. Uh, I think mainly because, unlike a lot of the films that uh, kind of fall into this genre, um, it's actually based on things that actually happened. Um, it follows um, Unit 731, which was a very secret and covert unit uh, during World War II that was part of the Imperial Japanese military. And their main purpose was to develop biological weapons that would be used um, against the, the Chinese, mainly, I think. Um, but, uh, but anyway, uh, what they're doing is they're, they're breeding these rats, uh, because what they're trying to do is develop um, a very deadly um, strain of bubonic plague, which is um, transmitted mainly by rats and the fleas that, uh, that live on the rats. So they're, they're breeding these rats and trying to cultivate this extremely um, deadly version of the plague. And um, they're also um, gathering up the fleas. Um, <clears throat> so that's their, their main purpose. But they're experimenting and testing on live humans, uh, mainly uh, Chinese and Russian prisoners of war. And this camp was located uh, in northern China, I believe. Uh, the Japanese had invaded down into China and were holding um, a pretty good bit of territory in the northern part of the country. And that's where they set up this camp. And um, its uh, main purpose, uh, as far as a film, is to expose the atrocities that were uh, uh, committed by the Japanese during the war. Um, or not the Japanese, or the Japanese are obviously not responsible for what their government and military did. It's the government and military that are responsible, so don't get me wrong there. I'm not saying that the Japanese people <laughs> actually did anything wrong here. Um, but anyway, um, they, uh, they, they have, it's not a documentary. Um, it, it does play out like an actual film, even though its purpose is to kind of educate uh, the viewer as to what actually went on. Uh, and one of the things that they have going on uh, in the film is there's a group of young boys, uh, some of them may not even be teenagers, and they are part of, um, I guess, what the Japanese, uh, it would be like the Japanese version of our ROTC. They're being uh, educated and trained uh, for a career in the military, but they're just kids. Uh, and they expose these kids to these experiments and these tortures as part of their training. So to me, that was m one of the more disturbing things in the film uh, was to, to kind of, you know, involve such young, uh, young men uh, in this, you know, crazy thing that they're doing. Um, that and the fact that it was based on real life. Now, I don't know if that was an embellishment uh, again. Uh, I didn't even know that the, this uh, actually happened uh, until I started researching this uh, this film years ago, because um, I have seen it before a very long time ago. Um, but anyway, um, as far as what actually goes on, it does play out kind of like a you know a history of what went on. Uh, you get to see some of the experimentation. You get to see you know the, the testing of these weapons. And then at the end of the war, when, you know, things started not going very well for the, the Japanese after the Americans bombed Hiroshima and Nagasaki, uh, they did a full-on retreat. They destroyed all of their research, or most of it, um, and uh, the, the camp was abandoned. So that's uh, kind of where it leads up to. Um, but anyway... Um, like I've done with the other films, I'm going to actually uh, share with you what goes on in the film specifically. So if you don't want to hear those spoilers, be ready to pause here in just a second. 
And like I said, I'll put down in the description below um, the timestamp so you know where to uh, pick back up uh, for my final thoughts on the film. So if you don't want to hear any uh, further spoilers, then stop now. And in three, two, one. Okay, so um, there's not a whole lot in this film uh, that I would consider to be truly shocking or disturbing. Uh, there are a few scenes. Um, the, the first that uh, I can remember... Because uh, there's a lot of standard stuff that goes on in this film uh, that I don't think is really worth uh, mentioning. Um, if you've seen uh, any films of this type or if you've, you know, you just watch horror, uh, you've seen a lot of the stuff that goes on here. Um, but there is one uh, that's pretty graphic uh, where they take this, uh, this Chinese woman and um, it's really cold outside. Uh, it's during the wintertime, snow's all over the ground, and they take her outside and they tie her up. Uh, with her arms exposed to the elements, and they uh, pour water over her arms, which obviously freezes because it's so cold outside. And uh, the, the, the text that came on the screen before this happened, this was some sort of frostbite experiment that they were doing. And every so often, uh, a guy comes out and uh, hits her arms with a, I think it's a sword, um, but anyway, he's knocking the ice off of them so he can pour more water on there and have, the, have it freeze again. So they, they do this several times, and then they bring her back inside, and they plunge her arms into uh, really hot water that thaws them out real quick. And in this process, they rip all of the skin and muscle tissue off of her skeleton. So all you see is you know, her arm bones and everything, and of course she's screaming because it obviously hurts. Um, and uh, yeah, it's one of the more memorable scenes in the film. Uh, it was, uh, it was pretty, uh, pretty shocking, I guess. Um, it, I don't know how realistic that would look. I mean, I've never seen that actually happen in real life, but I mean, as far as the depiction in the film, I mean, yeah, it looked pretty good uh, as far as the special effects and stuff that they use. But anyway, um, there's also a, another scene uh, where they take a young boy and uh, basically do uh, an autopsy on him uh, to remove his organs while he's still alive. And uh, this this scene has a little controversy with it from what I was reading, um, that um, the actual footage of them cutting into him and removing his organs uh, is actually real, that it was taken from a real autopsy. I don't know if it was, uh, if they're claiming that it was the actual uh, autopsy footage uh, that was part of the research that these people were doing at this camp, or if it was just some... Um, film footage that they got from somewhere else, but supposedly that is real. Obviously, they, they didn't kill the little boy just to make the movie, but uh, but you can be the judge of that because, I mean, when it comes to, to kind of researching these films, I mean, who's to say what is true and what's not? Uh, a lot of these films have a lot of hype, um, people wanting to believe that it's real, people claiming that it's real, um, so, um, yeah, it's just... Uh, one of those things is kind of like uh, in Poltergeist, the pool scene. Um, it was said that those were real um, corpses that were floating uh, in the pool with them that came out. And I don't know that I have a definitive answer on whether that's true or not either. Again, it's just what you, you know, what source do you find and whether you choose to believe it. Uh, but anyway, the, the, the scene is, this autopsy is pretty realistic looking. So, um, yeah, I mean, if it was actual footage, I mean, I could believe it, probably, but I don't know if it actually was or not. Uh, and then there's two other scenes um, that people um, really criticize this film for. Um, like I said, they're uh, developing this uh, strain of bubonic plague using rats. And in one scene, they take this cat and they throw it into the room that's knee-deep in rats, and the rats swarm all over it, bite it, and basically eat it alive. Um, and it does look kind of realistic. I mean, it's kind of hard to tell with this movie because it's so grainy, and it's definitely not in high definition. Um, I mean, it's... Uh, it looks like, uh, you know, some of these old VHS quality tapes that we used to watch back when we were younger. So as far as just how real it looks, it's really just hard to tell because the, the, the picture is not clear enough. Um, but it definitely looks like it was a real cat used throughout the entire scene. It doesn't look like, you know, some sort of... Uh, 
um, you know, prosthetics or anything that they were using. So I don't know if, uh, if the cat was actually harmed or not, um, or if it was killed or not. Now, after the film came out, uh, the director uh, of the film uh, responded directly to this, saying that the cat was not actually killed or harmed, that it was covered in honey, and the rats were simply just licking that off. But if you see the scene, uh, yeah, you, again, you can be the judge as to whether any anything was actually done to that cat or not. Uh, and then there is another scene at the end when they've been ordered to withdraw. They're destroying everything. They're setting the place on fire, and you see all these rats running around on fire. Um, again, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to tell just how realistic it is uh, because of the quality of the film, but it looked real to me. Uh, I, it, if you were to ask me my opinion, I would say that they set these rats on fire and filmed it. Uh, so you can be the judge as to whether you want to watch something like that or not. Um, I do believe that the BBC version of this film has those two scenes removed, and that's all that's removed. So if that kind of thing bothers you, then maybe that's the version of the film you might want to seek out. Um, but anyway, the, um, like I said, there's a bunch of other stuff in there that would be shocking and disturbing to normal people. But if you're a, a seasoned, seasoned horror fan, I, I don't think anything else in the film would be anything of note to you. Uh, just standard stuff, really. So anyway, that's uh, that's what's in the film. Uh, what did I think about it? Uh, to be honest with you, I thought the film was boring. Um, it's kind of long. Uh, it's got a lot of a lot of talking in it, uh, and the 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 reason that I say that it was it was really boring to me uh, was because the version that I watched the uh, subtitles. Um, didn't stay on the screen long enough for me to read them, and I'm not, you know, an extremely slow reader, so uh, they would just flash up, and then they would be gone, and then the guy's still finishing the line. I don't know why they did the subtitles this way. I don't know if I could find a better version, um, but because of that, I wasn't able to catch a lot of the dialogue, so I don't know exactly what they were saying and, you know, talking about all the time through this film. Um, and it, and it kind of wore on me after a while because I was, you know, just sitting there thinking that I wasn't getting, you know, the full meaning of the film. Because like I said, this is a, this is an actual film uh, in the sense that, um, you know, it does have a purpose. They're trying to, to tell you what happened to these people in, in World War II. Um, so if you don't pay attention to that, then you're kind of missing out on the meaning of the film. Um, but, but, but to me, it was boring. Um, it uh, it's just got a lot of things in it that I just didn't, you know, just wasn't interested in really uh, when it comes down to sitting down and watching a film. So as far as a pass-fail test, I would give this one a fail. Uh, but like I said, um, you know, if you, if you like watching things that, uh, you know, are based on history, uh, you might want to give this film a chance. Um, I don't know that any, if you didn't watch the spoiler section, uh, I don't know that anything in it is, is too bad. Um, but, uh, but if you're worried about that, go back and watch the spoiler section and then you'll know. Uh, but anyway, that's what I think about the film. Overall, just not that great. Uh, if you like this review, uh, help me out and click like down below and uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, that way you'll be able to see all the other uh, reviews that I have uploaded. And if you want to be notified, then click that notification bell and you'll get a notification every time I upload a new review. So as always, guys, thanks for watching and until next time, we'll see you.